Whoa, wait a minute. Whoa, wait a minute. Whoa, wait a minute. So, you have chosen to come back and face the catacombs when you could have escaped. I admit I am surprised. You are either a complete idiot or vain enough to think yourself invincible. And you are far wiser, I suppose, to leave a maiden to die? To not fight this plague on your own people? Bravery and suicide are two different things, human. You will have a chance to renounce your choice soon enough when you lay trembling under the Minotaur's hooves. We shall see. Thanks for the escort. We only escort you to your death. May the fates make it quick so that you do not have to scream long. The catacomb's entrance door is locked from the outside by the winged one's guards. It seems that leaving the catacombs by that door is not an option. Small speckles of sand stand out against the otherwise gray brick. Alexander picks up the skull. Alexander takes the shield from the wall. Alexander finds two coins on the skeleton's eyes. He takes the old coins. It's a trap. The doors have sealed Alexander inside. 
and the ceiling is coming down. In a desperate move, Alexander throws a brick into the grinding gears. The brick is caught between two cogs. The gears shriek and shudder. The mechanism grinds to a halt. The ceiling is stuck. The trap is sprung. Sounds! A trap floor! Alexander seems to have fallen to a lower level of the catacombs. Wherever he is, the place sure is dark. Alexander can't even see his hand in front of his face. The pawn shop's tinderbox is slightly battered, but in reasonably good shape. The tinderbox contains a candle, as well as some flint and tinder. It feels exact. Alexander takes the candle from his tinderbox and uses the flint in the box to light it. Aha! So that's why it's dark in here. A torch is out. Alexander lights the extinguished torch and puts his tinderbox away. Alexander hears the sound of a wild beast again, this time so loud that the creature itself seems to be in the same room with him. The noises are coming from the other side of the east wall. Alexander puts the hole in the wall on the east wall. The hole in the wall trembles slightly with dread at the clammy feeling of the stones. Alexander peers through the hole in the wall and sees just another room in the catacombs. Aha! Not just another room at all. So that's why Alexander couldn't find the Minotaur's lair. At least Alexander now knows the lair exists somewhere in the maze on the other side of this wall. While Alexander contemplates what he's just seen, the hole in the wall, frightened by the Minotaur, makes a run for it. Alexander hopes the little creature finds its way home to the Isle of Wonder.
very beautiful, very dusty tapestry hangs on the wall. Hmm, this tapestry looks familiar. Now let's see. I don't feel anything. Aha! A hidden latch. Alexander triggers the little latch. A secret door rolls open. No! I beg of you! Please don't hurt me! Your struggles are useless. It's the Minotaur, and he's struggling with a winged one's girl. She must be Lady Celeste. Alexander steps further into the room. The movement catches Lady Celeste's eye. She screams for help. You there! Human! Help me! Help! <sighs> Who dares enter my lair? I ask you to release your captive or suffer the consequences. Never you die, human. As the Minotaur advances in attack, Alexander slowly backs away. Until he can back away no more. Now where to, little man? The scarf is made of red silk. Alexander, his back inches from the fiery pit, tempts the Minotaur with the Red Queen scarf. Look here, you bully! Nice, bright red! The Minotaur drops from sight amidst the consuming flames. Slowly, his scream fades as well. Have you been harmed, my Lady Celeste? Are you alright? No, no, I am not alright. I assume you do not intend to leave me tied up on the vile monstrosity. Uh, of course not. Sorry. Sorry. Let's see. Let's see. If you'll give me a moment, I'll have these eyes in no time. I can't wait, wait for that long. Look, look, I wear a small dagger just inside my bed belt. It should be enough to cut the rope. Oh, all right. I, I got, I got it. it. Here we go. Here we go. go. yourself as the hero of the prophecy. Well, well I, I am expected to thank you for saving my daughter's life. So, so I, I thank you. I am obliged to thank you for the restoration of our, of our sacred catacombs. It means much, much to our people. We have, we have already, already begun the process of clearing the dead traps from its roots. roots. It, is, it is also my duty to grant you a visit, visit with the Oracle. So, so this you. I do. I, I will grant you the freedom to leave, leave here unharmed. unharmed. Despite my, my orders, the contrary from the, from the crown. But and there, my, my obligations to you end. I have no, no love for Alhazred, 
but he is my liege, and if Princess Kazima trusts him and wishes to wed him, my guards will take you to the Oracle now. When your time with her is through, I want you to leave the city of the Winged Ones and never return. I don't, I don't know who you are or what, or what you want here, but I, but I will not disobey, disobey my, my crown further. I, I thank you, Lord Azure. I, I will respect, respect your wishes. Hail to you, my great oracle, Lord, Lord Azure. Sent you this wingless mail. It appears that he solved the cliffs of logic and... Defeated the Minotaur in his lair. So, so I have seen. So this is the one that haunts my pool of late. Welcome, young seeker. What knowledge do you desire? Princess Kasima, whatever you can tell me, great oracle. Ah, of course, the princess. That explains my images. Let us see what we can see. I see a maiden, lovely and pure, but surrounded by evil. She is a rose set amidst bitter thorns. It is her fate to be the pawn of dark powers, and yours to try to redeem her. How? How do I redeem her? Fate is not like the cut of a blade, young one, but rather like the myriad of paths formed when a hammer cracks ice. I will tell you what I can, but what will actually come to pass is up to you. I see that any attempt to reach the girl will force you into battle, a struggle against a dark force. If you lose, your life will be forfeit. Who must I fight? A great darkness surrounds your adversary, preventing me from seeing clearly. I can only make out the shape of a black cloak. But before this final struggle, I see an infiltration, a dangerous game of hide-and-seek in corridors filled with enemies. The risks are high, but it is the only way to reach the one you seek. There is more than one way into this place. Your choice will dictate much. What else do you see, mighty oracle? Oh! Oh, such pain. I see two restless spirits crying out for revenge. These shades could help you destroy the Dark Force if they were to be brought back from their spiritual form. Yet this is only one possible path to your destiny. I'm afraid this is getting beyond me. I know very little about the afterlife. I can only advise getting counsel from the druids. Be warned. The druids are reclusive and dangerous. They might aid you, or they might destroy you. Like their island, the druids' nature is hidden in the mists. There is nothing more I can do for you, except to give you this. It is water from the sacred pool. That and my blessing go with you. Thank you, great oracle. ocean is not as calm as it appears. Underwater currents tug at Alexander's legs.
The underwater toe is amazingly strong here. It pulls ferociously at Alexander's legs. Before Alexander can retreat, the currents grab his legs. The shifting sand vanishes from beneath his feet. Against his best efforts, he is dragged out to sea. The currents around the island pull Alexander under. As Alexander struggles to the surface for the third and last time, he finds himself wishing he'd paid more attention to the warning signs of an undertow. Tickets up next. Nothing like getting swept off your feet.